Kala. Hey, nail tubers. This is going to be another set with my non-dominant hand. There's good and a little bad to this one, yet they still came out beautiful. But I felt it would be good to share it for you to see while I talk about it. After I did the last one, I was so happy with them. Then it occurred to me, I should try more different nail art techniques and ideas using my left hand, which, if you're new here, is my non-dominant hand. Clear is being laid since the color I'll use is strongly pigmented. I'm very glad you liked the recent set I posted. I was so proud of that ombre and the bling. If you haven't seen it, there'll be a link at the end of this one, so be sure to check it out. I do plan to include doing more designs with my non-dominant hand. I was thinking maybe a series, but I'm not really sure yet. I might just keep it easy on myself with work and all, and just keep it with everything in my acrylic playlist. I am running super low on monomer, which is why I hadn't been putting out a lot of acrylic videos, but I do have some on the way now, so you'll be seeing acrylic sets regularly again. So right here, the other nails went great doing the clear, and the beads were pretty consistent. But so many of us dread getting to the thumb, right? Now, there wasn't anything wrong, but I want to explain. I mentioned before that I work with a size 14 brush. And because of the size of the thumb, I have to either adjust the bead size or work with more beads. Or another option is to consider a larger brush, which I might be doing in the near future. But always keep in mind, there's no specific rules to this, guys. Do what's comfortable for you and always, always do what works well. Now, this right here is just my OCD. <laughs> I was feeling triggered just seeing this right there. Are you OCD? I remember one of my first acrylic videos on this channel and I'll tell you about it. Before the color though, I'll lay a portion of a nude nail bed, which I wanted to be an extended and offset cutout. I was making sure not to let it get too dry. I wanted to see how well I could use a cutout tool with my left hand and did this take some coordination? So the pinky went pretty good. When I did the cutout, I knew the section of the tool I used would be small for the other fingers. But the thing was, before I started recording, I did simulate the cut and the legs of the larger openings were too long to make the offset cut I wanted, which is pretty much what I was going for. And that's why I decided to use the smaller one. Then, as needed, I thought to use the outer edge of the legs to cut the rest of it away. So yeah, this went relatively well, and anything else can be cleared away with fouling before laying the color. Now the ring finger on the other hand <laughs> was a whole different story. I started with the nude, and it's so smooth and lays well. Oh, and sorry for being out of frame.
My first mistake here, I went back in trying to smooth out the nail bed instead of focusing on the cut and the acrylic was drying more. Then when I picked up the cutting tool, I forgot which opening I used so it might be a good idea to mark it some kind of way. And this costed me more drying of the acrylic too. Then the memory was full and the camera cut off but I just wanted to be sure to bring these things to your attention. But you can see the cut isn't as good as it came out on the pinky. So I move on doing the same on the rest of the nails and you get a better view seeing the middle finger. So yeah, way back when, I remember when a number of content creators would get comments from various viewers who would say stuff like something in their video was triggering their OCD. So yeah, that made me think about a video I did earlier in my channel. I think I had something like a string sticking out from a towel and I said something like, hmm, I wonder if anybody's triggered by this string. <laughs> so sarcastic, right? <laughs> So once the nail beds are laid and cut out, I filed the shape to crisp in the look, but even this was hard with my left hand because I don't want to loosen them. So you can see that I'm using real short filing strokes. And I also filed away any junky excess from the surface. With the green color, I placed it at the tip point of the extended nail bed, then worked it up the side, right against the nude. And it's okay if any gets on top of the nude, it'll come off when fouling and shaping. Now I do have to admit by the time I was doing this set, I had gotten so tired, especially my eyes, because I didn't mention I recorded both these on the same day back to back. So the rest of the nails are going to be the same as far as color. Then I filed off camera because, again, a few of these did eventually pop off. I am actually very happy how well the peel-off base coat works, while at the same time I'm still trying to figure out a better way for the nails to stay in place so I can record. The other thing too is, this is a temporary app I'm using and it tends to make things appear choppy. And when I'm adjusting the speed, I didn't realize until the other day that it's also cutting out some footage. So I shaped the cuticle area. I'm using a pan of 5 and one tapered fine drill bit, which is not necessarily a safety bit, though I do use it on a low speed like 6 to 8,000 RPM, and that's slow enough to maintain control of the e-file without causing injury like cutting yourself. And I also feel it keeps from over fouling this area. Then remember I said if you get any green on top of the nude it can be filed away. So you see I'm cleaning that up more here and the definition between the colors start to come through. Though not all of the nail bed cuts are precisely straight, but I am very happy with how they turned out, being my first time with my non-dominant hand. So I like to use base coat before any finish I put on the nails. It fills in minor imperfections and I cure that for 30 seconds. Thank you. 
Then I chose matte top coat for this set. This green is so vibrant and pretty to me, and I felt like matte would make it even more dramatic. And I cured the matte top coat for 60 seconds. I have these glitter liner gels and this one right here, yes girl, just to add a few sparkly touches with it. Now don't come at me for this because they're little imitation stones, but just to put a few in place to play in with the bling that I'll use. I'm also working on bling placement and patterns and getting a little better with controlling my non-dominant hand, I think. <laughs> I realized in the last video I used too much bling gel, which this is by McCart. Oh, and I did work the bling a portion at a time. Each time you see me take my hand away, I was curing it for 60 seconds. a few small dots of bling gel for the little green stones and this doesn't affect the super gorgeous look whatsoever. I went over it with another thin coat of matte to refine any areas where there was glue showing and cured that for 60 seconds. A few classic touches of sparkle with the glitter liner and cured that for 30 seconds and that has to be topped with glossy top coat and it should be cured for 60 seconds. And this, with my non-dominant hand, turned out so beautiful. I'm not even lying. I've been surprising myself. And the few imperfections will eventually become better as I do them more. Now remember the other recent video I did using my left hand. And I think you'll really like the ombre. You can click here. Did you hit the like button? And don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. I hope you enjoyed this and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Much love.